Hey, Dad. Uh, thanks for responding to some of my comments on Facebook. I just wanted to make this video and share some of the evidence I've found. Um, I thought that maybe a video would be um, a little bit easier to share uh, my ideas more clearly. And I'm also trying out this new screen capture app, so I thought I'd do both at once. Um, so really quickly, I just wanted to make sure that we are on the same page uh, with where we agree. Um, I think there are lots of points where we agree and then there are some points where we disagree or, uh, you know, we have some ideas that we could share with each other. Um, the first thing is, you know, looking at Google Earth, there are these tracks and you can see them. I, I do see them. I don't deny that they're there. Um, and they appear on the ocean floor and, you know, there are these tracks where they're rougher areas and smoother areas and it looks like something um, is actually on the surface of the uh, ocean floor. Uh, number two is that the tracks appear to be man-made because they're so straight um, in some areas and they're very rectilinear and they form patterns like squares uh, like you see here and um, so I agree with you that they totally look man-made. Um, the third thing is that the size of the tracks are much uh, larger and cover more area than anything else that's man-made on land, let alone two miles under the ocean. So um, using this ruler tool, you know, we can measure the width of some of these tracks, for example, just by clicking here, clicking here, we can see the width of this one is 6.89 miles. Um, I've seen some that are wider, you know, maybe this one's wider here. This one is uh, nine miles, some of them are 10 miles wide. Um, and then, you know, some of them are extremely long. Um, I've measured a couple of them that were over 3,000 miles, you know, just stretching clear across the globe. I mean, you can kind of see some of these here. They just look like, you know, they're, here's 4,000 miles, right? So I agree with you that they are enormous and they're bigger than anything man-made that we have um, in made in modern times. So um, just to make sure that I understand your point of view, um, I think this is what it is, but if it's not, um, correct me if I'm wrong. So you believe that what produced these tracks uh, were ancient technologically advanced beings um, that they made these tracks act on the Earth's actual surface um, sometime before 6,000 years ago, possibly hundreds of thousands or even millions of years ago. Um, that there are cycles of different beings that have used this Earth um, and that these are from past cycles before 6,000 years ago. Um, and that if we were to actually look on the ocean floor, if we, you and I could travel down a submersible, that these, the difference between this tracked area and the smoother area would be um, noticeable to us in real life because the tracks are there on the surface of the earth. So I, I think that that's what your position is. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And then, so my position is that the patterns are the result of joining together many different types of uh, bathymetry maps made by modern people within the past 50 years or even 25 years. And so for me, I would say that, you know, the difference that we see between tracked and non-tracked areas um, are the result of, you know, different types of mapping data and different resolutions. So that if we were to come down here in real life in a submersible, um, this tracked area would actually not have a different texture than what you would see in the non-tracked areas. Um, that for me that this, these are just different uh, resolutions. Um, so and the evidence that I have for that, uh, that's what I wanted to share with you really quick, is that um, first of all, uh, Google released a statement in 2009 uh, when people were asking questions about some patterns they found. Um, uh, you know, about something like this. This is off the coast of Africa, and people were saying, hey, I think I found Atlantis. And um, these patterns, you know, prompted Google. It's actually uh, people from NOAA and from Scripps um, who collect this data 
wrote this article saying, well, it's, you know, that's kind of a cool theory, but it's actually just the way that the data was collected that, for example, in, you know, this grid, it's not actually, that grid isn't actually there on the ocean floor. It's just that this data was captured by a ship and it wasn't calibrated to the the surrounding data. And so it was, you know, it looks like it, there's a depression there. Um, so anyways, there's that article, I'll send it to you. So that, you know, Google did release that statement. Um, the other thing is that there are, you can actually download, you know, different overlays for Google Earth here. And let me just turn on my sidebar and you can see, for example, I can turn on this overlay of all the tectonic plate boundaries, which is pretty cool. Um, here you can see this is the East Pacific rise, which is the fault line where the Pacific Ocean is spreading and it's the fastest spreading fault line um, on the planet, I believe it's spreading about 15 centimeters per year. So pretty cool. Anyways, you can have, you can download outlines like that. But the one I wanted to show you, I think is really cool, is um, that there is the ship track data from um, the agencies that collect this data. So if we can turn this on and then boom, you can see where all of their different ships have gone. Um, can kind of follow them. You can see that a lot of them are coming out of here, um, out of Chile, Val, uh, Valparaiso, Chile. Um, and you can see that they, you know, the, the ship tracks correspond with these, um, with many of these tracks that you would see on the surface in Google Earth. So anyways, then you can follow where these ships have gone. For example, if we follow this red one here, you can see that it kind of went past this fault line here. Um, you can see that it's following this track right here, right? That it took a sharp turn and then did this zigzag pattern to capture uh, the Wilkes fracture zone. And you can see right where the lines are is where this track data ends. So that's kind of the boundary. Um, so for me, that's compelling evidence, you know, that ships that came here are the ones that have actually collected this data um, and that it's just different data than the surrounding area, which coincidentally, I've learned that, you know, most of this surrounding data that's data that's smooth comes from satellites, not that they're taking pictures of the bottom of the ocean because light, you know, doesn't travel through that much water um, so clearly. Um, but what they actually do is they measure the small variations in gravity that show up in the surface of the ocean because um, each of these you know, points and bumps actually produce um, variation that can be measured um, because of the, the way it changes gravity around there. So which I, you know, I think is just awesome. It's amazing. Um, so anyways, it's much faster to gather data for the whole Earth doing that. And then when you want higher resolution images, then you use ships to use sonar. Um, so, you know, I thought that that was really cool. Um, what's even cooler about these is that you can come in here and click on the lines. Oops. I'm supposed to be able to click on the lines. There we go. So then you can see kind of data about the expedition here. You have the expedition number, you have the ship name, the name of the chief scientist, you have the start and end date. Um, which is pretty cool. And then you can go even deeper if you want to see more of the data. You can download the actual data sets um, that, that they've collected. And then uh, further, you can even click on here and see the equipment that they use to take this data, right? So here's device info. Uh, they used uh, this gravimeter, which is the Bell Aerospace BGM. They used this magnetometer. It's a Varian Inc. V75. They used this sonar multi-beam. It's an Atlas HydroSweep DS. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. You can actually see what equipment they used on each of these expeditions. And so in a way, it's, it's a reproducible uh, experiment so that if you, know, if you wanted to, if you had enough money and time and interest, you could go buy this equipment 
and um, and you would get similar results um, if you well if you knew how to use the equipment, which I obviously don't, but I I could learn and I could go and repeat this experiment. And it has the quality of the data, you know how much it's uh, been edited and and um, calibrated. So quality level one, whatever that means. Anyways. I uh, thought that that was really cool and that's, you know, more compelling evidence that these tracks are actually from ships because you can see the actual numbers. And then even further, more than just the abstract, um, you know, symbols, basically these topographical uh, maps, you can actually see photos of the ocean floor on some of these tracks. Uh, for example, if I turn some of these on... Not exactly sure where this is. Okay, so here's some right here. I'm going to turn off these. So obviously some ships have been through here. We can turn off these lines, but we can just keep these dots, which show. You can click on here, then you can see the actual ocean floor. Pretty cool. Um, you can see that they dragged... Um, an unmanned submersible probably and took these photos and you can follow uh, exactly where they are so since they're going over you know the east pacific rise obviously there's a lot of volcanic activity going on there so some of the photos are just really fuzzy but other ones are um, pretty clear and you can see exactly what the terrain looks like down there so there's photographic evidence i think that that's compelling as well and they they have it for multiple locations um, i'll send you a link so you can download these two. Um, what else? So another thing that I think is compelling is that if you look at somewhere like the Mariana Trench, which is, you know, is the deepest place in the ocean, it's uh, seven miles deep, seven miles from the surface of the ocean. And you know, here you can see more of these tracks and they come off of the Mariana Islands. And um, so this is where I think it's interesting is, let me turn off this uh, plate boundary. Uh, but there is, there is a set of tracks that go right down the trench and then right straight back up. So for me, I think this is compelling that it's, you know, ships above shooting sonar down there uh, because it would be, I don't know. To me, it just seems completely almost just infeasible and maybe even impossible, at least impractical, to drive some kind of machine down, straight down seven miles beneath the ocean um, and then drive straight back up. It would be much, much easier for these to have been created by a ship floating above and just, you know, cr taking data samples as it goes down and kind of creates the pattern that you would expect. Um, and that, you know, that brings me to one of my points is that, you know, obviously this doesn't represent how deep it is. And that's because the, we have to separate that, we have to separate the map from the terrain. And that is because the, the map is just a symbol of what is real. Um, and so it's, you know, it has its limitations and it's, um, it's not completely representative of what's real because Otherwise, we would just see what is real. It would be, you know, you know, they could make this look deeper or whatever. But what's interesting about these tracks, you know, it's going right over the Mariana Trench and then pops right back up again. Um, so I, to me, that's more compelling evidence. This is from ships. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Oh, so speaking of fault lines as well. Uh, here, let's go back to the... East Pacific rise, we can turn on our plate data again. The thing is that, so we know the expansion rate of this fault because um, they can measure it year by year by setting, you know, sensors on either side that, that basically ping each other. Um, this is separating at 15 centimeters per year. So then if you walk back to 6,000 years ago, if these tracks were older than that, um, then obviously there would be some new ocean floor that would separate some of these tracks, right? So let's see if we can find something that 
kind of crosses over diagonally. So here's something that goes over diagonally. Right, so if here's the fault line. Um, and if this track were created, you know, before 6,000 years or 10,000 years or whatever, then there would be some new ocean floor here. And so these, uh, this track would be shifted, you know, it would be kind of skewed and there would be some, you know, maybe a, even a mile of separation after after a whole, you know, 6,000 years. So, um, and if it's hundreds of thousands of years, obviously that's gonna be even wider. It's gonna be, you know, even tens of miles um, shifted over. So for me, that's compelling that these were created more recently um, and that they are mapping the bottom of the ocean there. Um, <clears throat> what else? trying to remember what else I was going to show you. Um, the other thing is, um, I think th that you do accept that the continents were all together at one point. Um, you may believe that it was, you know, together until the days of Peleg, um, about, you know, 5,000 years ago. Um, I believe that they were together much longer ago that it was you know hundreds of millions of years and it's taken a long time for them to separate but regardless of that um, if you if you take 5,000 or 6,000 years um, that these continents have been apart there would have been a point before then where they were all together and then one of these oceans would not have existed the, the terrain wouldn't have been there because so let's pretend like it was the uh, just for the sake of argument that it was the Atlantic Ocean um, that wasn't there, all the continents were converged at that point. Well, then these tracks would have had to have been created after the continents separated because obviously they're there. And we can do that with um, each of the different oceans because there are tracks on all of them, right? So there's no ocean where uh, the tracks could have been created before the continents separated or there should be at least one but you know there there isn't a place where there aren't uh, tracks so for me that's more compelling evidence that they're modern um, and not older than 6,000 years so anyways those are my ideas um, I think that they're compelling and they make a lot of sense to me um, let me know what you think and um, I'll talk to you later bye